is all hell matchup. Uh, this is a matchup I've been trying lately because uh, Ness is a is a, uh, a puzzle box that I've yet to unlock, and I, I watched Zero to None make quick work of PK Chris in a bracket they played a while ago, and uh, I said oh, maybe I could try that. Um, the only other character in Chris's disposal he could pick into is Krom, and that is not a matchup you want to put up against Zelda. So we're seeing an all-mess I, I actually think Krom does well against Zelda, but they're... Uh, I think Zero to None's edge guarding skills would make quick work of Krom. Yes, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to be a Krom player. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to just casually pick up Krom and expect to do well. His recovery is too uh, easily gimpable. He's not a good pocket character. That being said, though, Ness the whole way through... At this point in the bracket, I don't see ZTN switching off of Zelda. Nope. As long as Chris remembers not to strike on shield too often against uh, ZTN. Yeah, so, I mean, Zelda's one of her biggest strengths is her surprisingly good out-of-shield game. Like, her defense is top-notch when uh, when her shield's up. She's got it's up the fair, shield. It's the fair and bear, man. Yeah, like, you think you could space something against Zelda? You can't. You know, your fa the fair and bear are coming out fast. Uh, they're, they're hitting you hard. Uh, they're potentially going to kill you. Also, up E out of shield, another strong kill option. If you try to like just like cross her up, she can do that. And uh, she also has up smash out of shield, which is another reasonable choice. And uh, as we just saw there, um, when in close quarters pressure situations, she can kind of throw out that Naru's love and just say, uh, please get off me. And uh, that's a tool that you'll get a lot of mileage out of in this matchup. Ooh. Uh, speaking of mileage in, mat in this matchup, Ness gets tons of mileage from uh, his forward smash of all moves because it can reflect the Phantom. Zelda has to respect that, and it's very, uh, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic because like he's throwing out a forward smash, which means you can't approach him on the ground when he's doing that, you know? Because he's just trying to swing at you. Yeah, it's, it's a weird song and dance between these two characters because there's so many defensive options that ZTN has, Yeah. but if he chooses the wrong one, he's letting Ness break zone, and he just needs a simple hit <gasps> Ooh, that's to like some cause weird one of the stuff there. most awkward edge guards we've seen all night. That's saying something for today. That bear just barely not killing. Yeah. I like that uh, Chris has been using that uh, PK flash to stall. Very smart stuff. Yeah, you're a believer in the move now, right? I mean, as a stall move, I think it's cute. Like, there, that was that was really cool. Uh, oh, that's... the body block. I think that was really smart stuff. You know, in defense of these two lads, they run into bracket very often here. Yes, so, this like, is not their first rodeo. The levels of counterplay are definitely on, like, a healthy amount of levels of Yoni. Yeah, this, this matchup has tons of layers. The fact that the Phantom absorbs that PK fire, the fact that Zelda can reflect PK fire and PK thunder, um, you know, Ness can absorb Din's fire. Like, there's lots of interesting, uh, intricate interactions with this matchup, and I and even really the, appreciate it. Even on the base level, you have a character who has an overly defensive style mm -hmm. off of someone who can generally break those type of play styles and punish them. Like, yeah, ZTN gets a cut off for playing out of shield, but how often do you want to shield against Ness, especially in, like, a heavy brawl? Yeah. That being said, ZTN's got the lead. See how well he can keep it if he can rack up Ooh. damage. If Chris had spaced that yo-yo a little better, that would have been scary stuff for uh, ZTN, but luckily he was able to clean up that edge guard anyway. Nice following of the DI. Very important for those out there that are uh, uh, frustrated when playing against Zeldas. Uh, you can DI that up the out of shield, and it's very difficult for the Zelda to follow it up. Like that. He's <laughs> it's just got it on back on lock. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, love to see that kind of matchup awareness, especially like a... I, I think it's safe to say this is a more awkward matchup. Yes, it is, 100%. It's, it's not often that you see like a mid to high level Ness off against like an equally leveled Zelda. Like just population density, it's not going to happen that often. But ooh, I love to see the cross up up there. Yeah, these are, these are two very unpopular characters, I'd say. And uh, I, I think that's what makes uh, this such an interesting matchup too. Good use of jab there, like realizing that they were kind of both in a open state. Good air dodge. That your air dodge is really big. You have to respect it. And uh, I think Chris needs to recognize that when he's in the air like that. Ooh, ooh, very nice smooth. stuff. I like it.
Barrett of Shield being one of Nessa's better options, as a matter of fact, worked really well in that situation. He knew that the ZTM was going to try to go for a quicker night. Yeah, and you know, I, we, I spent so much time talking about Zelda's Bear and Fair out of Shield, but Nessa has those options too, and they're quite good. Like where Ness sits as like a, like a strange, like rushdown kind of character. Not even really a rushdown. He's just sort of like a, like a brawling type character. He wants to get in. He's not quite a grappler, even though he gets a lot off of grab. He's not really a zoner, despite how much he can rely on his projectiles. Like he wants to be up in your face like that. And then Zelda's definitely on the flashier end of the zoning characters. She can afford to be a bit more aggro. So match that in with the playstyles of these two guys who complements those tools really well. Like, it brings you an exciting match for something that, like, typically you would see these characters and groan is, like, the, the right. usual response. And, like, it's tough to place these characters into some defined archetype because uh, while Zelda does have zoning tools, like, uh, whether or not she's a zoner in the traditional sense is hard to say because... Uh, you know, she's not throwing like boomerangs, bombs, and arrows at you like Link would. Um, like, it's not hard to get in on Zelda. You know, she has one projectile, usually at a time on the screen. So, you, you, there's there's not a lot to consider there. Uh, same with Ness. Obviously, he only has his one thing. So, uh, again, unlike like a real zoner like Link, um, you can get in on the character. Both of these guys showing that off really well. They've just been doing nothing but going back and forth, breathing down each other's throats. Yeah. When, when, I, when I like to define how Zelda operates, I like to put her in the category that I put, like, Duck Hunt Dog in, which is, like, a setup character. Like, There's definitely a lot of levels to the setup when it comes to, like, what your tools are. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a character archetype that, uh, like, takes a lot of... Uh, it gets a lot of hate, but... When you watch them play and you watch their setups, it's pretty freaking cool to watch. Whereas Ness, like, you can even look at Ness's projectile and it kind of helps you understand, like, his projectile goes, like, two inches, you know? He's he's uh, definitely trying to be close range. Ooh! <gasps> and safe to the ledge. That was so smart. Bit of a renegade option, especially at kind of middling percentages. Oh, that second up tilt not connecting didn't work out too well for zero to none. Because that could have been a juicy combo. These retreating aerial PK fires working out so well for Chris, too. Yeah. Ooh. Like, his idea of counterplay for the night is super strong. But I feel like because of that, ZTN's kind of taking advantage of him. Like, ZTN has, like, a clear plan every time he retreats and puts the knight in front. Like, yep. if the knight works, if the knight doesn't work. Wow. Good call out on that jump. Woo! And that one too. Zero to none, just stuffing each and every jump here. That knight covered that space, but there's a wind box on it, making it tricky to land that final slash. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, but it's not nearly as easy to break zone on the knight once it's doing something as it looks. Yes. Yeah. And you know, that knight has flaws, and you can use them against, uh, against Zelda here. Uh, like that wind box, like, can make it very tricky to line up the hit you need. Yo, the stall with the PK Thunder waiting just a tiny bit to come back to the stage. Oh, this could be big damage. Look at this. 30 oh, damage. Oh, you're wild for it. Chris is and absolutely he insane. He's absolutely insane. If this game has been evened up. Holy. I can't believe that. There's no reason for this <laughs> game to be as close as it is. And Zero to none just panicking out of the corner, up being to center stage, saying, get me out of here. This is nuts. I mean, I wouldn't want to be here either. Very smart choice to go past the ledge with up B there. Um, that yo-yo would have been curtains for Zero to none. Now neither of them want to get near each other. <laughs> I don't blame them. Chris has... <laughs> this is Chris's game to lose now. Yeah. Nice stall and air dodge getting his way to the ledge somehow, some way. ZTN had such a safe path into game three and potentially into loser semifinals. Oh, that roll! The knight prevented the roll from going full distance. That was really, really smart. Yeah. Oh, that, that's that's a good wake-up call for ZTN that he can't... that he's got to keep it together to the very end. Oh, yeah. He really did almost just straight-up lose yep. for winning. Yep. All right, crowd starting to wake back up again. This time their chosen hero is the Long Island native. What a game, man. Chris really just strapped on his helmet, 
and like dug his feet into the ground and just said like, "I'm gonna <laughs> not <charge."> today, <laughs> yeah, Rhino style." <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, well, here we go for game three. Full set on stadium. I know this sounds dumb, but if you'll hear out my analogy here, see, in Yu-Gi-Oh, we have what's called helmet decks. <laughs> for, and I, I know it sounds dumb, but, like, people, you can mash in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Chris definitely a helmet player right now. I don't know, man. This is, like, prime mashing. <laughs> I can't believe he just said, I'm going to up me twice. And, uh, the, the, the crazy part is, and is it's that safe. not even that, the fact that if he aimed it just a little bit better or timed it a little bit better, he would have gotten the shield break. See, normally with these helmet decks, right, you need the helmet to, for like extra precaution, right? But his stuff was safe, so he doesn't need the helmet. He could just mash. No, safety first. Come on. <laughs> he doesn't need it. I can't believe he just got away with that. <laughs> Well, it's, it's put on the proper amount of pressure for Game 3 as well. Oh, These yeah. boys seem to be spacing everything just a little bit better just because it's all just a little bit further distance. They oh, don't sure. want to try and give away too much. Although an adaptation I'm noticing as we transition into Game 3 is that Chris is trying to keep a bit more of a grounded game. Yep. And that's very different from the past two, and it seems to be working out pretty well out the gate. Yeah, and I mean, if you think about Zelda's kit, that game plan makes sense because, like, on the ground... Her forward smash is probably the only tool you have to worry about, um, like for her normals. But in the air, those normals hurt. Like her fair and bear are way better than her, like jab and F tilt, you know? You know, I know I'm bringing up this point as soon as uh, Furor's win finally gets a kill, but you know, in Mario Party, you get like a bonus star at the end of the game with some like random trait. Yeah. Chris definitely getting the bonus star for this bracket for DIing out of Furor's win, right? Oh, yeah. He definitely <laughs> landed on the most mystery spaces. So L far. Literally, literally, no one in this venue right now would DI this move better than him. I don't know what that says about him getting hit by it so many times or like that he's just learned his lesson and ingrained it into memory. And if you're going to DI one move, it's probably a good thing to DI a kill move. True. The double size stall is kind of cute. Oh, very, very nice uh, slow getup from Chris, but reads the jump. Zero Whoa! Going out there and dying for it. Yo, CT covered everything and still was not able to clutch it. That back air not killing. Well, wow. I was from the other side of the stage. Fresh or not. Uh, you can't escape that one. Yeah, no. Nah, that sword is respectably pretty large. Oh, man. I'm not quite sure what blocked there, but cool. <laughs> I love this close range pressure from Zero to None using his projectiles, but like right up in Chris's face. Really cool stuff in the corner there. <laughs> and he says, no projectiles for you. Oh, now Chris is clapping back with a combo of his own. 70 damage. Oh, oh, and if the platform was just a little... If he was just a little bit more to the left, that would have been it. I, I, I appreciate it. He hasn't done that since game one. Yeah, no, it is scary. You have to consider it as Zelda. Like, if, you're, if Ness is on the ground, it's an option. Oh, reflecting the fire into the night. Oh, that Din's fire is... Yeah, a direct hit Din's fire is really strong. The venue's silent. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, good hey, listen, Chris, if there's though. anything that this set is teaching you, let it be that there's no right way to play a campy character.